Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Anything Wrestling Podcast. Thank you once again for tuning in. We got the whole band back together. It is another triple threat going on today. It is the Sean to Dan the Man. (coughs) Ladies and gentlemen, my name (laughs) is the Kamish. And not only am I the advocate of this podcast, but... Today we have a very special episode for you guys. Very special. In my heart. Now, when the guys thought I was crazy enough to bring up this idea, (laughs) they thought I was referring to... Who'd you say? The gobbledygook? The gobbledygooker, yeah. (laughs) And you were wondering, there's so many hymns I could refer to. I knew exactly what you were talking about. That's why I told you that you cannot find any of your favorite WWE programming only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of only $9.99. $9.99? It's not $10. Not $1,000. Not $1 million. But... $9.99, $9.99, which you can, by the way, find all your favorite WWE programming only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of only $9.99. A lot of words. A lot of words there. However, <laughs> I think it's time. Um, I think it's time, not, not just because it's like, it's a sensitive topic, but come on. It's Vader time? <laughs> it's not Slater time. Why, why am I afraid that this is going to be his whole portion of the episode? Is just making jokes to deflect. <laughs> I think what it is is because it's it's such a like it's it's a, it's, it's a tightrope topic. That's feed what it me is. more. It's it's an old school topic. Get it? Old school Undertaker tightrope. Ah, 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 ah. ah. Anyways, anyway, <laughs> but I think Stevie Richards is due because he's been brought up in a couple episodes. I've always brought up the idea somehow, without mentioning his name, his, you know. That's his name. Stevie Michael Richards. Thank you. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, at least use the, the actual middle name. Yeah, at least the middle <laughs> name. Um, and kind of a little bit of a disclosure. Some of you, who I'm guessing a lot of you have already put together who we're talking about. I'm guessing some of the younger generation won't exactly know. It's the gobbledygooker. Yeah. Um... Uh, just uh, let's just get this out there the fact that we're not trying to poke fun at what has happened no, because this, this is not to poke fun at him at all um, we're, at all. we're just kind of we're giving since it's anything wrestling and Dan you kind of brought this up since it is anything wrestling you do talk about anything that retain, that pertains to wrestling however we're kind of we're, we're PGing it so that it's not so you know we're walking the lines of the PG era with this one because technically he is the uh he did give birth to the PG era. Which is so funny because the first time you brought that up, I'm like, no, I don't see... And then you start uh, thinking about it. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's get on with it. Stephen Michael Richards. Uh, former Canadian wrestler. 22-year career. Dan, would you like to mention some of his fine accomplishments? He is a multi-time champion uh, all over the board. I'll give specifics on that as soon as I get there. Um, Former Royal Rumble winner. Main eventer of WrestleMania. And let's see what we got. What's relevant? So he's got New Japan, uh, New New Japan, WCW, WWE. I'm sorry, what? He's also part of ECW. 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 Yes, there it is. ECW World Tag Team Champion with uh, Dean Malenko. The man of a thousand alts. <laughs> which you can find on his list. Which we can also find on my list. Move number two. The arm bar. <laughs> very, very short, short spoken on that one. Uh, New Japan Pro <laughs> Wrestling. No, sorry. IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. Uh, Super J Cup. Winner, I guess, which is um, not quite the best in the world, but uh, <laughs> several awards by PWI, 
Uh, all right, so let's burn through the, the major ones, though. One-time WCW World Heavyweight Champion, WCW World Tag Team Champion twice with Malenko and Saturn. Moppy. Uh, WCW World Television Champion, United States Champion three and two times respectively. He was the seventh Triple Crown Champion of WCW. Wrestling. Wrestling. Uh, World Heavyweight Champion, uh, WWE Tag Team Champion, uh, three-time United States Champion, four-time IC Champion, three-time World Tag Team Champion with Jericho once, Edge twice, Royal Rumble winner of 2004. Uh, Second person in history to go number one and win the Royal Rumble, by the way. There you go. I'm sorry, Dan made a mistake. It wasn't 2004. It was 2000. Oh, you're you're you're, 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 trying, you're trying to bury it. Okay. Uh, well, how about this one? Twelfth Triple Crown Champion of WWE. If you really want to figure out who we're talking about and haven't already, go look that one up. <laughs> <laughs> and also, he has additional accolades as well. But seeing that he's held twenty-two different championships with the biggest promotions as far as WCW, ECW, and the WWE, and New Japan Pro Wrestling. So. I actually had to, I didn't even know until last night when I was literally just kind of researching. The guy has been all over the place. I, I was at first under the impression that he went to WCW and then just made a transition to WWE. But I kind of looked, I'm like, this guy's been all, all across the border. So the thing with that is, from what I read, is that... Uh, okay, let, let's start where he started. He, he learned from one of the best in the business, from Stu Hart. He was... One of many participants of the dungeon. The dungeon, yep. Um, obviously, being that he's from Canada, he needed a visa to work in the U.S. I'm just saying. So most of the time, you would find him in, in Canada, Japan, wrestling outside of the U.S., even Mexico as well. Yeah. Um, at one point, he did start in WCW. Wrestling? Yeah, but... His name, I think, came up even bigger in ECW. ECW. So thanks to my favorite manager of all time, Paul E. Dangerous Heyman, he gave him the moniker of the Herder back then. This was around 1994, 95-ish. So It's kind of like Nia Jax with the face breaker. You really want to just set me off with that, don't you? <laughs> yeah, we'll save we that go. for next episode. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but, obviously, like, other than being known as that, before he made his impact in WCW... Wrestling. He had already established who he was as far as, like, being someone who can not only be a tactician, but he, or tactician, I'm sorry, he can be... A good technical wrestler. Yes. But let's be honest because... If one of the best. If you're crippling one of like your ECW's finest um, in Sabu, who's been one of the most hardcore wrestlers in that d- uh, company, I think you've earned your name at that point. So the problem with uh, this guy is that his visa had expired and Paul Heyman was unable to get him re-established back into the States so he had to go away. He had to go away to, to New Japan around 95-ish. Which then, I think that's where you started to pick up that he was in WCW. Wrestling. wrestling. Because they were able to get, bring him back to the States. Yes. To work for them. And I think that's where he started to build his career up as far as like you know being a multiple time champion as far as tag team television uh, you said U.S. champion? Yeah. As well? Yeah. What did he establish there in WCW? Other than being, you know, the herder. The four horsemen? He, he tried to... It was more popularized. As far as, like... Because let's be real. There, there's some fans, that, as far as our younger crowds go, that only recognize the four horsemen as, like, Oh, you mean Ric Flair and those other guys? They don't even know their names. When when you at least think of Stevie, you think of like Stevie, Perry, uh, who else? Eddie, Dean Eddie, Eddie, Dean. Other than being the radicals, radicals in WWE, they're the four horsemen there. 
So people are more familiar with that stable there, at least. Yeah. Um. I honestly think when he was in, uh, uh where where was the WCW wrestling? Where was their promotion at? Down south. They said Florida or Florida. Yeah, I think they were Florida. Isn't it? His best rivalries, Booker T, and uh, Suck em. um Bret Hart. He had really good rivalries with those two, and I, and that's what helped I think Booker T's career, because it it, it set Booker T up like oh he can be a good singles competitor. He doesn't have to yeah. rely on uh, Stevie his Ray, Stevie Ray, uh, to just only be a tag team champion. Because I remember they had good wrestling matches as well because, what, they were always in competition for the TV championship or was it the heavyweight championship? One of the two. Yeah. I mean, what? How, did you ever see him in WCW? I've seen various clips. Okay. Um, I know there's one notable match that I know you mentioned with Booker T. If I'm not mistaken, he also had some matches with Eddie Guerrero in WCW. Yeah, they they would also have it out as well. Um, he also had good matches with... Um, oh, where was it? Well, I already said Bret Hart, but like... Uh, he... He did have a lot of before his matches were bigger. Chris Jericho. Yeah. Like you could always see the two of them, like see who was the better submission um, tech, technician. And I always thought when I saw him wrestle, like I thought he was the better. Just because Jericho, like I think what happened in WCW for Jericho is like they tried to really bury him. They didn't really believe in him as much because they gave him like. What cruiserweight championship runs and like crappy belt runs as opposed to, you know, Stevie where he got the bigger opportunities. And it just seemed like you never really got the best out of these two here. So when let's move forward to 2000 in January, Mm -hmm. Jericho's already in WWE by then. You get Stevie along with the Rat Cows. Or radicals, however you want to call it. The radicals. <laughs> uh, joining into the uh, WWE, or post-anonymous then, WWF. Yes. Get the F out. Get it. God, I remember that. <laughs> um, I think, what, in one year, like, Stevie won a lot? So like he had good rivalries in the very beginning. Like he, his career started to jump off. He he actually just jumped in almost immediately to the title picture. Um, because the thing is, he never was seen with the radicals as much. Granted, he's a part of their stable. He immediately fended his way up to like championship status. Yeah, he Whether was in uh, title. He was he was in feuds with The Rock and Kurt Angle and. Uh, Kane, Undertaker, yep, all those top players, Triple H, everyone. He just immediately just jumped into that um, to the title picture, basically. So this is this is what I always thought. Like bef- before, like further into his WWE career, who do you think he had a better like um, traditional rivalry with? Was it better with Jericho, Angle? Or Triple H out of those three. Or you know what? I'll even throw this one in with Stone Cold. Ooh. Um Cause remember, his name was Stone Cold Steve Austin, and half the time he didn't deserve it. He was the WWF champion and he didn't deserve it. Um <laughs> there's actually one match where Austin gets pretty technical and like you don't see, you don't really see that side of Austin. But I think the one guy that Stevie always had probably the best matches with, and it just it just clicked, is Kurt Angle. Yeah, because you have an actual amateur Olympic wrestler, Greco Roman, very technician submission, going style. up against a man who grew up with that and learned that type of wrestling as well, but yeah. also implied you know the entertainment factor of it as well. So, what they would have best two out of three falls. Submission only matches, title like matches, thirty minute uh, Iron Man matches for submissions only. Like 
they would always put on the show. And it would never get old. Because I feel like when WWE, like, replays a match today over and over, you're like, oh, it's this again. But with these guys, like, every single time, they would they would, they would would really just deliver. And it would, you know. <clears throat> well, it was, I think with for that, it's because you had a, a deep pool of talent and they utilized it better back then. Yeah. My, you, it was like shuffling a deck of cards in between shows. Versus this where it's like, all right, here's your ace of clubs. And here's another ace of clubs. You want a third ace of clubs? Aces I got and a eights? whole deck of ace of clubs. Aces and eights? Aces and eights. <laughs> and, Wrong promotion, uh, sorry. And yeah, so I, I, I think that that's why they were able to keep stuff fresher yeah. back then. Because you would they, have like an ace of clubs going up against an ace of, of like diamond. Yeah, and sometimes and even a four of spades. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. The, <laughs> I'll chime in real quick. The the triple threat match between Jericho, Kurt, and uh, Stevie. Um, WrestleMania. Yeah, the, the the two out of three falls for both titles. Yeah. At the time, that was one of my favorite matches. Yeah. Because I liked all three guys, and having three guys who are who are thoroughly technical performers yes. was really really nice. It was really cool to see that match. And, that, and sorry, but that actually also reminds me of the ladder match that Stevie and Jericho had at the Royal Rumble the next year. Yeah, regarded as one of the best ladder matches. I, I think with that match, it, it's like, granted, what it's the second longest match of that Royal Rumble that year in one. It's possibly yeah. That year, like I've told you guys, I think off air is has been the best year. My favorite year because you always had. I think A plus pay per views. You had one of the best storylines coming, and also like you, you, even if before the invasion came, you had these guys like giving you their best month after month after. It was never like now where you get one pay per view that's solid, and then three months worth of shit onward. Yeah. Um, at least here it's like okay, you get. A good match. Oh shit! Now it's followed up by a better one. Oh crap! Stevie's up next with Jericho. Holy shit! That's like one of the top five ladder matches of all time. Now. Well, I think that people like Steve Austin have gone on record to say that the one reason why the Attitude Era surpasses all the other eras by far is not just because of content; it's because the drive that that roster had. Everyone in that roster, pardon the pun, knew their role and knew that they wanted to do better than the guy that came before them. Oh, you guys had a great opening match? Oh, we're going to one-up you, you know? Because it was that mentality. Now it's like there's no really other promotion coming against WWE. Let's go out there. Let's slap a three-hour Raw together. And, uh, let's go home and call it a day. And then what do you refer to it with Raw? What do, what do their creative and writers do? Slapstick? Is that? Or they throw it to the wall? Throw shit at the wall, whatever. Yeah, basically. Like, like, that's what you get now. You You don't get... Like, all right, we have this going on, but we also have a rivalry going. What can we do to one up it? And as far as Raw goes, but we also have these three things going as well, which will elevate the show. There is one thing that actually does that now, and that's NXT. Yeah, and and my thing is too with like as far as like Stevie went, like before he got hurt in two thousand one, is that I think his best time was against Angle. Because, what, they had this whole thing about stealing his medals and, like, keeping him in a safe, warm place. <laughs> like, as much as, like, you, you find that behavior in a heel, Stevie pulled it off so well <clears throat> as a face. But 2001 came to a short, brief end for him with a bad neck injury at King of the Ring. So we never got to see Stevie and Triple H in the... Invasion angle at all because they were out, yeah, throughout the whole thing. Imagine if you had them in it. Well, if I can touch on one match where the both of them are involved, and a lot of people have said this is one of the best matches on Raw, it's the tag team match of Jericho and Stevie versus Triple H and Austin for the tag titles, where Triple H tears his quad, finishes the match. A lot of people have said that that's one of the greatest matches to never be talked about on in the history of Raw. Well, 2002, when the brands were finally split up, yes, and then we started getting draft. That's that's where I was actually, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's when he came back, right? Yeah. 
Uh, he was the third third wrestler picked by Vince McMahon to be part of the, the new SmackDown roster, although he was still injured. And then when he finally returned, he did so as a member of the Raw roster. Huh? That's what threw me off. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's when this was. Um, I think that his brief tenure on Raw was not really noteworthy as much as his tenure on SmackDown. And he was kind of established as one of the top guys on the show. Because that's where he was continuously having matches with Kurt Angle. He started having matches with Brock Lesnar. The guy could go with the, with literally almost anybody. With you know, he was having feuds with Eddie Guerrero as well. So I think SmackDown is where Stevie really established himself as one of the top guys that cannot be mentioned. He even had rivalries that were very well um, with uh, the jorts wearing, <laughs> word life rapping, John Cena. The only. You mean the 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 doctor? Yeah. <laughs> of thy basic thugonomics? Thy basic thugonomics. And that's when, like, obviously, he had a lot to prove. And what better wrestler to do it with than Stevie? Who better than Canyon? Austin. <laughs> Always. Um, <laughs> should we skip to 04 when he won the Royal Rumble? Because um, he had rivalries from 02 to 03, but it, it seemed like it was just elevating him to get to that point where it's like, all right, you're going to get your push now. Um, yeah, just so that we're pinpointing noteworthy matches, the Royal Rumble match that he had with Kurt for the title, which a lot of people have said one of the best matches. Um, Second participant ever in WWE history to go number one in that Royal Rumble year to win it all. Well, let's, let's talk about it. So 2000 <laughs> comes around. And uh, finally, it's that. And see, this is around the time where I felt like if someone was due for a push, they got the push. It's not like now where we're like, you got five people ready for a push and no one gets it. Um, <laughs> well, we'll just throw you all in a match with a sixth guy and he'll win. Wait, what? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa there. <laughs> Hold on a second. We could do that. Or we could do a tag team match with The Undertaker. Brother. Holla, holla. Um, but um, yeah, I miss Teddy Theodore. I miss Teddy. <laughs> um, so yeah, you get the 2000 Royal Rumble. Um, number one or number two? He was number one. He was number one. Um, lasts throughout the whole thing. Second person in history to do it. And goes on. Actually, no, he was a SmackDown competitor. Comes to Raw. And I think this is where you might feel a little bit, you know, um, this, this is where it might, it might kind of, you know, hit you in a sweet spot because he comes into a feud with Triple H and Shawn Michaels. And Austin being the sheriff, the sheriff, at the, the time, sheriff at the time, uh, made a decision that, okay, we'll have a triple threat. It will be Stevie versus Shawn versus Triple H at WrestleMania <laughs> for the World Heavyweight Championship. Um... I will go on record to say, awesome match. Love the match from A to Z. Has everything in it. You know, it's a. It can be a, described as a technical match, high spot match, everything. Well, wasn't that match the first match that actually ended in a submission? In the WrestleMania, the first WrestleMania <clears throat> Mania Championship match. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because I, I think I read it here just now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The count. The count. Like I, I'm. I'm, as far as technicality goes, I'm a I'm a big fan of smooth transitions between moves. So the counter out of the pedigree into the into the move, oh, it's so pretty. He was actually very good with those countering a move and just you know. Yeah, he he was he was on an like an RKO level of countering, yes. <laughs> where it's typically very smooth and you don't necessarily expect it, but it, it it's happens. beautiful when it happens. That was so. Th yeah, this was one of my favorite way ways to end WrestleMania ever. Uh, and you have the dynamic between Stevie and Eddie, who are longtime friends, both, both holding, holding a championship, and you end WrestleMania with confetti and the both of them in the ring. Yeah, and this al this al almost felt like it was gonna it was gonna open the gates to like a new a new era because of the fact that these were not your quintessential uh, stars. So, well, it's kind of like you're bringing back like. That it doesn't have to be your big six foot, 
three, six foot six, like monster of a man to hold the belt. It does, it's not like your Undertakers or your Canes. Yeah. It's kind of like you're reintroducing like guys in Shawn Michaels' status. But yeah. Probably a little smaller just because it seemed like Eddie and Stevie were shorter than Shawn himself. And it's like, okay, you have tacticians again. You have guys who will give you their best as far as technical wrestling goes. Granted, Eddie at the time was very, very controversial in most of his winnings with, uh, oh, there's a chair in here. Whoops. <laughs> Wait, did did you hit disqualification? <laughs> I love that about Eddie at the time. It, it, it was amazing, but like Eddie's he, still one of my still one of my favorite mm-hmm. wrestlers. But you you would always get like that good of like wrestlers at that point. Yeah, which also set a what new rivalries with I think, uh, well a finishing rivalry with Shawn Michaels, at around that time. And then I think something was starting up with... He he kind of feuded with Triple H for a second. Sean was kind of um, in the background. He was feuding with Triple H. Well, you brought up Edge. That's, that's what I was like going towards. Like He started a rivalry with Edge. I think Orton was in the mix as well. Well, Orton is the guy who... Dethrones him. Yeah, at SummerSlam. <laughs> um... And I'm trying to think. So we kind of transitioned into 2005 where that whole, the whole money in the bank thing gets introduced where if you have talent that's not being utilized, let's try to utilize them somehow. So Stevie along with I think five other people go into the first ever money in the bank match. Um, pretty good match. Uh, trying to remember what Stevie was doing in 05 after that. Well, in 05 at one point he did get redrafted back to SmackDown. To SmackDown. As the number one pick. That's right. And then during that time, I think towards the summer, uh, we were seeing the uh, one night stand. Yep. Of Isita. 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 Um, Where he kind of reignited um, a, a one time match with Eddie again, which he won uh, via the Stevie DT. Um <laughs> That's good. I like that transition right there. That was good. You like that? Um, well, let's talk about One Night Stand. That kind of brings back his history there. I mean, you have the man come back. You have practically every ever affiliated EC Dub, excluding Jericho, because he didn't come in that night. Reunited. He did. Jericho? Yeah. I didn't he, see he, him at the end. He. I don't think when he was beating the crap out of. Uh, I don't think he was at the end, but he was feuding with. If I could be serious for a minute. <laughs> um, Good old Lance, one dance. One. Um. I think he, one night stand just showed a lot because it granted that yeah, DCW was being buried. Vince still had some kind of acclimation towards ECW because it's like okay. Yeah, I stole most of your talent, and I'm more than happy to give him a home here in WWE. And I'll give you, I'll give you your one night. Granted that JBL and the <laughs> WWE wanted to ruin it. Uh, well, you know, um, Stevie's friend Blue, Blue Mini got very much injured that night, which is a shame. But at least, like at that event, like you got to see the best out of everybody. Yes, like you got to see why ECW survived as long as it did. And why they prefer to go out in a bang as opposed to WCW wrestling. Oh, we're conceding. We're just gonna have Shane come in and announce himself as the owner. We don't care. Uh. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I think what when they're kicking uh, Bischoff's ass, mm-mm. you had a uh, Austin. Oh God, the leader. Jerking. <laughs> what do you say, Ray? Give him, give him a six one nine. No, but what did he tell to Stevie Richards? Stevie, Stevie, go up to the ropes. And then, oh, I'm not gonna say the move, but we all know what happened. No, we we know the move. Oh, the the, the dive. Stevie kick. The Stevie kick. Yeah, the dive. But then, what does Austin tell him? Ah, uh, <laughs> kill, <laughs> kill that oh, son yeah. of a bitch. But that, I thought that night was great for everybody, including Stevie, because it's like you know you got your moment. You guys all got your moment back, but we. Again, we have to transition back 
to SmackDown and Raw, you know, you're still building yourself up. But I think this time, I think this was the best time where they made the U.S. Championship relevant. Yeah. It didn't get much of its praise back then in uh, WCW. Right now, it's like, it's in the dark with well, Shinsuke. Um, I hey, Shinsuke's the United States champion. Who knew, right? Because we barely see it on SmackDown being defended. Barely. But you can also catch Shinsuke only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very small price of only $9.99. Consequently, the only place you can catch Shinsuke Nakamura <laughs> right now. But um, you're, they're, you're they're, talking about the the replay from WCW? Uh, which one? The, um, I keep almost slipping. Um, Stevie versus uh, Booker. Oh, yeah. In the best of seven. Mm-hmm. Was, wasn't that in WWE? They did it in both. Oh. Um, the fact they did it twice, it, it was amazing. They, like, they brought that rivalry back to life in the WWE in a best of seven. And like I remember those best of seven matches. They, they gave it their all. You remember that one dive where Stevie literally just dives over the ropes and goes back first into the announce table? I was like, holy shit. Like... And not even in a, like an ECW, holy shit. I was just like, holy shit. Yeah, because you're not supposed to land like that. <laughs> no. But in 05, granted, out of the best of seven, tragedy did come Stevie's way as far as losing one of his best friends. Yeah. Um, passing was, of Eddie Guerrero. On November 13, 2005. Um, I think that's the most emotional person we saw. That night. Like, granted, like, you know, everybody had an affinitive love for Eddie. Yeah. It hurt him the most because... They're buds. Yeah. Uh, like... Yeah, you have this line here. Some of his colleagues state he was never the same after Eddie's death, so... Well, no, the, and, and that's not, like, a shoe or, like, a, a, a hit to anybody because it really impacted him to a point where it's like... Oh, yeah. Because I'm trying to think. He he was he was probably what his his best and may I don't want to say only but one of his longest running friend probably yeah that was still in his immediate proximity yes. at the time so yeah that'll uh, that'll fuck you up a little bit mm-hmm. or a lot especially the way that it especially the way that it went down because uh, it was after Eddie had had all of those all of his all. Ah, all of his problems, uh, his de- his demons, as they address it in the uh, in the specials. Um, and what what hit me with his thing specifically is that, I, I mean, it kind of comes back later with with Stevie. The irony of it is Eddie was proje- was pro- he was going to win the world title again the yeah. night that he died. Yep, and. It was because Eddie was he was at the top of his career. He had all the all the success, and then it just goes to show that anything can happen. So, yeah, that that, that moment hit me too. Seeing Stevie as uh, emotionally devastated as he was, because it's something you never see out of someone, you know, who's entitled to be like the best technician in the world, or as like the rabid animal. That he was, yeah. You you saw humanity in him, yeah. And granted, it broke kayfabe, but that that'd be like if you guys lost your best friend. I know I'd be devastated. I I, I wouldn't care. Well, what's going on in my life? I just lost someone that meant the world to yeah. me. Someone that I trained with. Someone that I came into this business with for years. And it just sucked. Like, but. At that point, I think that's when we started to get the best of seven again. The rivalry with Booker T. Um, then Orton had to step in at one point for Booker T. But then they were going in a new direction with Stevie and JBL. Yeah. Those matches, I was just like... Lackluster. Lackluster, but it's like, whose ass is trying to get kicked the worst? Stevie's <laughs> or JBL's? But I think at the time, JBL needed surgery. For like a broken hand or like a cyst in his hand, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and it, it, it never really felt like something like amazing with those two. I, I don't know if it was JBL being the bully that he is or if it was Stevie who was just like, he wasn't 
in the right zone anymore. I, I don't know how you guys felt about that rivalry. Not really noteworthy. I mean, you know, we've talked about the Kurt Angles and the Austins and the whatnot, but JBL is not exactly someone who comes no. to mind when you think of Stevie Richards' rivalries. So. Mm. JBL's uh, not really somebody that comes to mind. Ever? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to end the sentence there. Not really someone who comes to mind. Is he, is he public enemy? <laughs> No, I mean, okay, real, real side quick, <laughs> if we could just veer off to, to the left again, if we could be serious for a second, what is really thought of with uh, JBL? Like, if, if the first thing you think of, I, okay, aside from his bullying, I always think of APA. I think yeah. of Bradshaw. I think, I think of just him as Bradshaw, not like... This political Texan, like, Longhorns, you know, racist American. Because that's how he comes off to me as that character. <laughs> Back in the day when he was just the beer drinking, bar fighting, uh, protection agency. Damn! Um, Ron Simmons. Don't take the asking personally, son. <laughs> hanging out with, <laughs> you know, wrestler. That's who I liked yep. with JBL. With this JBL... I was just like, God, what are you trying to do with people? Like, you're, it's like you're trying to be Triple H, but you're burying yourself in the process. I don't know if you heard, but the only reason why he was WWE champion was is because Triple H didn't want to work Tuesdays. Thanks, Paul, for that. <laughs> but like, you, you know where I'm, like, I'm getting with that. Yeah. It, like, it, it just seems like JBL was never really like. You're a wrestler, you wrestler. can appreciate the effort because I've always said it. You know, sometimes you need like a shift or a change in direction. But I just felt like, eh, no. Well, okay. In, in JBL, uh, status before commentator, what stood out with him the most for you? I'll tell you this: Shawn Michaels. His rivalry with Shawn was like the only good rivalry I think he had. Oh. um... When Sean was like, hey, we all kind of get into a financial crisis, and it was JBL's, what, what do you what do you, what do you call it? What was the name? Oh, I forgot. It, it was it was, it was something demeaning though. I don't I know. know. I don't remember. Anyway, um, but again, that rivalry between Stevie and JBL just kind of showed like, eh. yeah, pretty garbage. <laughs> and then what? Pretty, pretty garbage. <laughs> and then from and- what I'm. Reading here, he ended up winning in October his fifth U.S. championship against not Mr. Anderson, Mr. Kennedy. Oh, I don't know it. Kennedy. I hate doing it. I prefer Ms. Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? He had that. He had a quick rivalry with Chavo Guerrero. Um, from what I'm reading here, he engaged in a rivalry with MVP. Well, let's talk about that because Dan, you actually saw Stevie Richards live and in living color. I did. I did. It was around that time, actually, right? With yeah. one Montel Vontavius Porter, <laughs> who claimed he was the best man to hold the U.S. title. Ha! <laughs> Challenging Richards at WrestleMania 23, which we've discussed previously. Uh, Richards going over. Um, no, I mean, like, MVP wasn't bad. No, he wasn't. No. Um, and seeing, yeah, seeing, because I think I had seen him at a couple of li- live shows or um, the the weekly shows before Richards. Um... <laughs> It's so, so you've weird. Seen Stevie it's so more than weird. once, right? I think so. I think I've seen him. I think I'd seen him three times by that point. I've seen more times than us. Um, I've actually seen him once. Okay, that's obviously more times than me. Actually, the smack that I went to was just good time because it's right before Eddie passed away. So I saw the both of them. Yeah. Yep. So what did what did it feel like like within that rivalry before? Um, I mean, the next draft. <laughs> It, it it covered everything we've talked about, where you got to see his his technical skills, you got to see his aggression. Um, Toothless aggression? Yes. And you're going to mask the, the year 
of a pay-per-view and then blatantly reference that. I didn't reference anything. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, but no, it, it was a good match. It was a good match uh, for what it was. Um, obviously, like we said, he's had, he's had better feuds, but I, that one wasn't bad. One with the CBDT? Yeah. But this is where it starts to get a little dark because in yeah, June of that year... Again, the redrafting. This time we have a third uh, stable to send superstars to. Easy done. Easy done. WWE version. Yeah. WWE CW. I never liked it. It it was short lived and you couldn't. It's like no one wanted to do much with it. It made me sad. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, basically. You should have left it broken. But wonderful. He got drafted there. He had what? His last match against Elijah Burke for the vacated EC Dub World Championship. And was gonna face John Morrison at the SummerSlam. Formerly oh, Johnny Nitro. Yes. Formerly Johnny Blaze. <laughs> um but I think like what? This is also the time when we could have seen what I thought would have been a good uh, rivalry. CM Punk. Yeah, they they because they they were slating Stevie to essentially be the Triple H of ECW. Yeah, he was going to be your major your major name because I think he was the longest standing and biggest name they had over there at the time. Because like yeah, you still had. You had I think you uh, saw Kane and Big Show. At ECW. But I, th- I, because what they would do is they would have people from the main roster go to WWE ECW and have like a one time match. Yeah. But Stevie was like, he was there. He was on that. He was on the brand. Yeah. And you, but yeah, I mean, you had some other ECW originals on there, but mm. yeah. Uh, Stevie was supposed to be your, your marquee star for that, that program. And uh, so he, he was, uh, what was it? He was slated to face. Nitro that night, and uh, I believe was was he was he champion at the time, or was it no or was no, it no, no no it was vacant yeah, and uh, obviously we find find out that he uh, yeah this is I think this is the part you you were dreading getting to so here's the thing the, the he was destined for the match at Vengeance yeah on the twenty fourth yeah. When we get to the dark day, June 25th, 2007. So, WWE um, does a, what I believe they called a welfare check because Stevie didn't show up to a couple of events. So he they, was saying things about the BWO having food poisoning or they were ill. Yeah. For some reason. Um, and so, WWE doing a welfare check. Police officers show up at the house. And uh, find that what what's the term? Double what is it? Uh, for for all our viewers, uh, conversation is gonna go in a pretty gnarly direction. So, um, th- let's see what they what they double murder suicide. double murder suicide. Yeah. Um, I was trying to see if there was a, a separate term, but yeah, that, how, that's how, the base term. Do we, do we just want to read off of Wikipedia? Do we want to, what do we want to well, do? What's a long thing? Oh, um, do you want to read the first paragraph of it, Dan? Uh, sure. So, the welfare check after Stevie missed a weekend of events uh, without uh, notice. Uh, they found the bodies of Stevie, his wife Nancy, and their seven-year-old son Daniel. Meaning. Um... They no no additional suspects were sought after they examined it. They determined it was uh, all it was all murder and a suicide. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, I don't want to read that part. Uh, no, no, son, no. son was drugged with Xanax and no, then no. murdered. Uh, yeah, it was a it was intense. Like when the details started to come out, you, like every new piece of information kind of sent that chill up your spine because you're like oh jesus christ and it keeps going like oh my god it can't get oh any worse oh my oh, god oh it can <laughs> yeah it kept getting worse yeah it was it was not good but th- this was also they did the um because they did the the tribute special on monday right At yeah monday because because the details hadn't come out at that point 
Right. This was supposed to be that episode was supposed to be dedicated to the death of the McMahon character, but then that they, via lim- limo explosion. Um, so they do the Stevie Richards special where they show off his career. However, 24 hours later, they get hit with all this information, and Vince McMahon in the WWE CW um, episode says, um, "Best of 180." Says we are no longer going to mention Stevie. We're no longer going to have any of his slogan or merchandise or anything. It will not be mentioned. Um, the show must continue. And even then, they didn't mention him at all at Friday SmackDown. Yeah. Um, it got to the point where it's like they went cold turkey. Yeah. Um, they were saying, as I'm reading here, prior to the murder suicide, Stevie had been given illegal steroids, not in compliance with WWE's wellness program back in 06. So you could say that this kind of had a negative effect on what transpired. When they got the full details of everything that happened, it seemed like they tried to wipe him out of existence. But yet you could still find all like his matches, all like his like tapings where on the network. only on the WWE network for a non negotiable very reasonable price of only nine ninety nine. Well, I think the reason for that is because of the fact that with how long he was with the company, if you if you wiped him out of the network, that's gonna derail a lot of the logic yeah. of your programming because you'd be like, Wait, so why how did we get from this to this? Oh, it was everything with Stevie got us here. So Cause he played a big factor and was one of their biggest stars at the time. Yeah. So let me um ask you guys personally. I guess I'm taking a survey here. Hey yo. Around this time, and especially again, Dan, you just went to WrestleMania that year. How did you guys feel hearing all this? I think you should take it first because you saw Yeah, you were there, year. like you 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 just went to a WWE event. Yeah. Kind of like what we talked about with Roman. This is going to be an odd segue. You look at these people, and you just sort of assume that they're... Invincible. Invincible, healthy, prime of their, prime of their, their lives. And uh, so you don't think anything is off. Nothing seemed explicitly off. Granted, we are not hanging out with these people. Yeah. So there could be telltale signs that that we we don't get to see. Um, watching the match, watching him perform, you don't really know anything is up. And he, again, we said it before; he's pretty smooth. Everything yeah. was smooth. Yeah. Um, so the skill was still there. You didn't see a significant drop off, um, but I guess there was shit going down in 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 his in his head. Um, I'll, I'll jump over to this real quick. This is just the excerpt on how it was described. Stevie's brain was so severely damaged it resembled the brain of an 85-year-old Alzheimer's patient. So he got... He was fucked up at some point. And so... No, wa- wa- watching it, you don't think... Or entertain the idea that something like this could happen. And then you're struck with that news. And like we said, at first, you're just like, oh... He's dead. You don't know the details. Oh, yeah. his, him and his family are dead. What the fuck? And then it comes out. Well, he did this and this and that. And you go, huh. And now your entire perception is modified. Yeah. Um, I can sit here and I can separate pre-event. I mean, I guess there's no post-event. Um, the events prior to all of this and go... I appreciate everything that had been done up to that point. He was a solid performer. He gave us entertainment. Blah, blah, blah. So you can look at it from that perspective. But then you get to this and you go, well, I don't know how to feel. <laughs> so it, it, it messes with you a little bit. So this is my take always on Stevie when it came down to it. Like, I think, and I've said this so many times, if he had changed some of his particular moves... Maybe he wouldn't have had the brain of an 85-year-old Alzheimer's victim. He could have lived a lot longer. He could have had a more prominent career. But the problem is, 
It's kind of spawned change. Granted, it came on a negative note. It 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 it, it started something that should have been done eight ages ago. Personally, it's for me because it's like you. I like that the WWE now is more aware of like, hey, we're going to take your injuries more serious than we ever have. We're actually going to be more concerned regardless of how minor it is because we never know where it could lead to. Back then, it seemed like, okay, you know, we're, we're still fully aware, but can you compete later on? Can you come back in a couple weeks? Can you come back in less than six months? It seemed like they're... Like, wellness program is there, but it's like, uh, let's get you back real quick. We, we kind of need you for this story. It's like they didn't have as much care for their athletes as they do now where it's like, oh, you possibly have a torn ligament. No, we're going to look into it. If you can't compete, I'm sorry, we're writing you off. We'll bring you back somehow, but we need you to get better. We need you to come back ready to go. We're not going to risk your leg being broken or whatever. Um, oh, you got a chair shot, you blocked it, but you're still having headaches. Okay, we're going to take you into concussion protocol. You didn't pass. I'm sorry, you're not competing. So the way they're handling it now, unfortunately, on the circumstances of what Stevie did, was a good thing. But at the same time, it's like the safety factor should have been there in the very beginning, especially for someone who does a move. Off the top rope, involving on on to his head. Yeah, because you're you're risking damage no matter what. And and I know you're not a big fan of this sport of the of NFL, but even then, like they're taking safety precautions even further now. Because let's be real, a helmet cannot protect you. Something heavy on your head that's supposed to protect you when it when it hits contact, you're gonna feel a fucking headache somehow. Because you have Guys that are minimum 200 pounds, if not bigger, coming towards you, hitting you in the head. That's almost the same impact of a guy who could be Dan sized, grab a steel chair, and a full force speed, if he wanted to, smack you across the head. That's almost the same impact. I've never liked that that had to be one of his like pinfall moves. You could have come up with something better. Personally, you could have. I like that he was a tactician wrestler. I like that he used submissions. I, I like when there's submission matches. I think those are better because it's a lot less risk to the head. Yeah. And that and that's what makes me sad that it's like, okay, can't I think he could have had one of the greatest careers ever. He could have retired in a few years from that incident if it never happened. And it would have been okay. Because he would have learned, okay, I could train people how to be careful. I can train people how to be good submission specialists now. Like me, if not better than me. He would have been an amazing wrestling trainer. Yeah, like, imagine all the good he could have done for uh, wrestlers in NXT. Or NXT UK. Or they could have done something in, in Canada. You know, there, there was so much possibility. Yeah. But the unfortunate is... All the damage that he did to himself and to others, unfortunately, came back to bite him in the ass. And again, it, it, it's heartbreaking. It's sad, but it's like, unfortunately, in the circumstances of life, we never know what direction things go with people. Yeah. Um, that that that's my take, Sean. I, I, we want to know how you feel because I I get it. When we brought up the idea, it's kind of like touchy we don't know where it's gonna go but it's not like we were gonna be like oh you know your real name real name real name real name no well how how do you feel about everything that went down as far as that incident his career his life just your take on stevie overall well when it happened back in 07 i was still in my teen years so it's like as a teen this type of stuff what while it is pretty intense it doesn't really hit you as when you're a young adult and you kind of have a little bit more of an understanding of what suicide is, of what a double murder is, or and all that. So when that happened, um, 
I don't remember crying. Like, I cried really hard for Eddie Guerrero. That I do remember. For Stevie, I don't really recall crying. Um, I think, Dan, I'm pretty much on the same page with you where before this, I can say, and I, I keep on saying it here, Stevie was a really good performer. One of the best technicians ever. Um, and it sucks that when you talk about SmackDown or good technicians, his name is is not there. It's omitted now. Yeah. Or it's an asterisk. Yeah. Um, but I think by the same token, um, it kind of sucks to say, but it's like something bad needs to happen for stuff like this to be implemented. It changed it. Um, if you if you think about it, it's like back then, as you said, you know, you combine, you know, steel uh, chair shots to the head. You combine blading, you combine the diving head, but you combine steroids and you combine all the stuff that was in his body. That's that's not going to be a good combo as we saw. And stiff workers. You had a lot of guys back then who worked stiff. Yeah. And it, uh, who who'd we who'd we say did it earlier? Just beat the shit out of someone. Perry Saturn. Yeah. Um, somebody hits you hits you hard, you beat the shit out of them for the rest of the match. <laughs> I mean, I can remember Stevie's so. chops when when he would hit that thing. That would echo around the arena. Yeah. Um. And I kind of want to tie it into to today. If you think about it, recently we had two things that kind of happened where it's like, okay, while we hate it, we understand why WWE did what they did. Number one is you guys recall when Daniel Bryan had a match with Shelton Benjamin. He did the flying goat. And at first I didn't even notice, but he literally lands on Shelton, like just head first, just lands on the guy. And you look at the fact that Daniel almost never made it back to the ring because of concussions and all that. And also you think about Becky Lynch, where everyone was furious. Oh my goodness, you know, Nia broke, you know, Becky's face. I personally, kind of from a marketing business and first and foremost safety standpoint, I'm glad that they did not let Becky compete. Because while she can go out there and say, I'm the man, I will still compete and whatnot. It's like, okay, but your health comes first yeah. before anything else. It's coming like, first now, no matter Which what. wouldn't have been the case back then. Yeah, they would have said like, oh, you have a black eye, well... Make it up a little. Cool. They'd slap a fucking mask on you and send you back into the ring. Yeah. To keep your to keep your face together. I mean, Big Show recently did an interview where he was addressing this, where he's like, "See, with Becky now, they are not letting her compete, no matter what." But he's like, "Back in the Attitude Era, yes, it was the hottest thing. But if you went in there saying like, i 'I'm not, I'm not feeling it, something's off,' they would go, ah, you go out there, you got to do your thing, you got to perform.' You know, they wouldn't pay attention to it. If you were realize when you guys are watching clips on YouTube that when you see stuff from the past the way they angle chair shots now they try to like cut it real quick so you don't see the impact of the chair yeah hitting even though it's already been seen some of those videos look edited that way because it's like you don't want to promote the violence of hitting someone in the head with a chair and you don't want kids seeing that and you know. Granted, on the network you could see it. Shit, Mick Foley took sixteen shots to the head from The Rock, and he swung that shit like a baseball bat. Well, I mean, and then what? It was like you got to sell it. You handcuffed sell it. by the yeah. way, and that's fucking dangerous. Mick's brain probably isn't in the best condition either. <laughs> um, but the man can write books still. So. Yeah. My God, and fucking. Pulitzer Prize winner if he could be at this point. The funny thing is now sometimes I watch those chair shot videos and I'm like, they do it like it's nobody's business. I think the funny thing is over the last decade, we really haven't seen much of it. And then when you go into a video where for 10 minutes you're watching that back after, you know, like back to back, you're like, oh, like at one point you get cringy. Yeah. You're you like, start feeling, oh my God, I can't watch, but yet, oh, there's another, oh, there's another one. Yeah, so... Ooh, piece of candy. <laughs> Ooh, piece of candy. Um, so, yeah, I would say that I'm glad that WWE kind of had to do a 180. And as you said, it was the introduction of the PG era because they realized, hey, we got to tune some of this stuff out and we got to... I granted, like, some of it as veterans of the time, like, you know, like Hunter and Sean and The Undertaker with their matches, like, you still saw chair shots, but they weren't as violent. They started protecting their faces... Yeah. Although back chair shots, they still took them. Because remember... Depending on where you hit yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like... 
I don't want to thank him for this, <laughs> but it is appreciated now that they see like, okay, we need to really consider that these are not like machines. These are actual wrestlers. They're human beings. Yeah. They're people who deserve a long, healthy life after this sport. If this isn't their full, full on future. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna I'm, I want to shift real quick and ask uh, ask uh, a question. So you're taking a survey. Hey yeah. Yes. Um, do you guys think that like cause how how long has it been? What like, what year was that? That was oh seven oh seven. So eleven years. eleven years. Eleven years in. Do you think that there will ever be a time? Where WWE will publicly acknowledge his contributions to the industry and stop actively having him erased from the history books. You want to answer that first? Like this, yeah. this is just an opinion question. Yeah. Do you think yeah, there will yeah. be a point where there's enough time removed from the horrific incident that they go, we are, we're still distancing ourselves from that, but... He was such an important part of the industry at the time. We can't continue to ignore that portion. The performer. Yes. I'm gonna. Do you think they're just gonna? I'm gonna have to go fifty-fifty because the way I think about it, I'm like, okay, yes, you did have the Ultimate Warriors and the Jeff Jarretts and the whatnot. Hmm. That you know, things happen, and for a second, you're like, that's it. It's never happening, and then it did. However, by the same token, you do have the Chinas and the whatnots who even they wanted to make amends and say, let's be okay, let's come back to work and let's be on the same page again. And WWE, still to this point, has not done that. Um, now, I, wanna, I do want to clarify because I, this could alter your, alter your answer. I'm not suggesting do you think that they will induct him into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just mean do you think that they'll stop just striking him from the record? Like the you you feel like will they finally remove the asterisk? Yeah, I f- I feel like even if they do, it's gonna be more of a CM Punk deal where it's like if we can avoid it, let's avoid it. But if we have to mention it, fine, yeah. throw it in there. Because well, the universe mentions CM Punk every year now. Yeah, but they still there's moments where they kind of go out of their way to alter like a camera angle where you don't see Punk's face or they like just completely remove. No, but you them. can't silence a crowd. You can't. Um, so I'm I'm kind of fifty fifty. Yeah. I feel like if they do, it's gonna be WWE eyes where they're like, okay, we'll give it to you, but there's gonna be a, a twist on it. Yeah, I personally think they should include him, not to the Hall of Fame, but it should be like, you know what? He contributed his life to the sport. He wasn't like a bad person. He was just a victim of circumstance when it came to the steroids. To the performance capability he had to be under at the time. And he deserves his due. I'm not saying like he's the first round ballot. No. Unfortunately, it, it will take 20 plus years to finally consider him into the Hall of Fame. But we can't not mention it anymore. Because it's like... Well, it affects you, a lot of stats. Exactly. Too. So Because what? Triple crown winner, grand slam winner... The guy was in every fucking practical promotion at the time that there was. That was the biggest at its time. Everyone associates all those brands. Oh, he was a part of that. He was a part of this. He fucking made his name right here. You you can't not acknowledge the guy. He's yeah. there. He's he's gonna be there. Like kids who are gonna grow up with this and want uh, and like. Are doing what I'm doing is like, oh, I want to see shit from the past. I want to see why, you know, Stone Cold is Stone Cold Steve Austin. I want to see why, you know, Shawn Michaels is who Shawn Michaels is. I want to see all these guys. Oh, who's this guy? Who's Stevie Richards? I want to be where the people are. I want to see, want to see him dancing. Oh my God. <laughs> it's a little mermaid joke. <laughs> Good, uh, good segue in there, by the way. I try, I try. Um, but you, you get where I'm going with this. It's, it's like you can't not look at the history books and be like, oh, where's this chapter? Yeah. Oh, why does this not make sense at this time of year? The- Dan, 
why doesn't anything make sense? You know what I mean? Like, that that's the unfortunate part of it. It's like, you can't erase someone from history, but you also can't be like, well, you know, he's a bad guy. No, he's not a bad guy. I, like I said, he's a victim of unfortunate circumstances. Well, another name that comes to mind when you say that is Hulk Hogan. Someone who they <sighs> tried to strike off from the record books. Four but, times now? But let's be honest. You, you, you can't... The man contributed to the fucking sport. The fucking sport came because of him. Yeah. The he, entertainment he, factor came because of him, brother. Um, so, Dan, you asked a question, and I would like to follow up with another question. Wait, are, you, are, are you taking a survey? Hey, yo. <laughs> um, oh, how the tables have turned. For life. Um, if Stevie Richards was around, or was still around, yeah. a performer... What would be a dream match that you would like to see? I will go and say mine right now. I would love to see Stevie Richards versus Daniel Bryan. Whoa. Possibly. I thought, I thought you were promoting your guy. Your Poss- boy. Sacco Rollins, John? Yeah. <laughs> I would like that too, but I think technician is, is what kind, kind of comes to mind first. Yeah. So I'm like, who would you put against Stevie? Because that's, that's how you get the most out of the performer. Is exactly. You match the styles. I would do a two out of three submission only match. Mm-mm. Submission only? That's. Are you just trying to avoid I'm trying headbutts? to avoid <laughs> the Stevie DT. Thank you very much. I mean, I, the first one that came to my mind was Sako Rollins, John. So I, 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 I. Seth versus Stevie would be a. Would have been, would have been a great. Would have been a great match. Um. So, so yeah, it, it is too bad. Did you have a different answer? Or? Yeah. I would actually like to see a rivalry go on between Stevie and Kevin Owens. Because mm. you have a guy who appreciates the Attitude Era, a guy who he can put on a show, he, he knows how to wrestle as a big guy and as a technician. And Stevie was great when it came to working with guys twice his size. He he made anybody tap. Yeah. It didn't matter who it was. With Kevin Owens, he would give him a challenge. I, I think Kevin Owens would give him the best challenge out of those three options that we picked. That that'd be my pick. Be interesting to see. Any final thoughts or do you I think was, that about I, wraps it? I was gonna say. My final thought is that for future superstars and entertainers and wrestlers in this business, it's like they should take time to acknowledge who's come from the past and learn from those people because at the end of the day, you don't want tragedy to happen again. You never want that to come around again. Dan? I agree. Um... We're in a better place as an industry as a result of the the actions, actions yeah. the events, and uh, would would it be uh, would this be a happier episode of the podcast had those specific events not happened, or that we had arrived here for for some other less abrasive reason? Yes, um, but with tragedy. Like we, like you said, with tragedy, often comes change. Um, so, sh- <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate that this was the catalyst, but we're 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 here to mostly discuss the the history of the man. Stevie was still a uh, great performer, and uh, it is it is a damn shame that he he didn't uh, last beyond his beyond his time. Um, but he still deserves he still deserves acknowledgement for what he did yeah. in the ring. You know, they're always talking about the person inside the ring and the person outside of the ring. Um, I would say that in regards to the person inside the ring, you know, you need to have respect. Um, I understand what what the man did was not was not, you know, 
it's not something that you look at and you're like, I can surpass that and just look at him as, oh yeah, everything is fine, you know? Um, everything kind of, it's it's like, I don't know if this is a good um, analogy, but it's like the Montreal Screwjob where it's like, you have Sean and Brett who are two good performers. Oh, but the Montreal Screwjob. And it always goes back to that. It, it always gets pointed back to that. So with Stevie, I feel like, great performer, multi-time champion, head of lines, WrestleMania, but that happened we're not going to acknowledge him um and i get why i get it from wwe's perspective why that is but um i will just go on record to say the performer absolute respect the man you know i stand by my first statement so with that um there you go guys we just went through the life and times and the career of stevie richards um let us know what you guys think in the comment section below and we will see you all next time i'd give this episode of wrestlemania 20 out of 10